Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 We certainly do total y'all today, conditions of y'all. I know I do. Another day that he, he has given us. Another day that we can assemble ourselves to give him todah and to give him praise. Hallelujah. For it's a sad shame today, conditions of y'all, as we look at the world today, it's sad out there. And we as a people of Yah, we should be able to look at the world and see the sad shape that they are in. And it should be a warning unto us that we, as a people of Yah, you look at the world, there is a press out there in the world today. This world today is pressing. They're pressing towards a thing that is highly esteemed within their lives. Hallelujah. And, it, and if you look at them, you, you'll see the turmoil, the things that they are going through. And you, and you look at them and, and, and they're just they're, they're trodden down, as you will see as I get more into this message today. And this world is, is taking everything that they have. It's taking all of their strength. It's taking all of the life that is within them, that is within them the little life that they have. And we as a people of Yah, that should be a warning unto us. Yeah. That Almighty Yah is giving us a chance. Yeah. He's giving us the fruits. He's giving us the things that we need yeah. to eat upon. Yes. Yeah. To walk as a people of Yah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we shun it. We come here and we hear the truth. Hallelujah. 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 And we leave this place. Yeah. And we lose the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. We must press as a people of Yah. There must be a press within us. There must be something deep within our lives tonight, today, conditions of Yah, that will cause us as a people of Yah to press. For we haven't seen anything yet. Our little ailments, our little trials, we haven't suffered nothing yet compared to what Yah is going to bring upon this old land. Hallelujah. We haven't seen anything yet. Well, Oxymory, you don't understand. I heard here, this is bothering me. I'm battling in my mind. We haven't battled anything yet compared to what's, what Yah is going to uh, put upon this old lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the purpose of Yah allowing his press upon us? Because Yah is going to press his people as well as the wicked. He, Yah is going to have us in this press also along with the wicked. But see, we as the people of Yah, if we take heed unto the Torah, yes. if we take heed unto the mitzvah of Yah, yes. we will come out of this thing yes. ahead. Yes. We will reap the benefits of what Yah has for his people. Yes. Yes. But the wicked, because they know not Yah, on their way to hell. They're going to seek to save the things that they have put before y'all. Their things. Hallelujah. Their houses. Their family. Their little ones. Things that they have put before y'all. Their kinsmen. Hallelujah. And that is the purpose of this wine press that y'all is going to put us in. Hallelujah. Uh, what is the purpose of a wine press? It presses the grapes. And it gets out the juices out of the grapes. And so when we are pressed by Yah, it's going to show what's, what's in us as the people of Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I always tell my friend, Rayak, I say, time will tell. When we can talk this talk, we can holler Yah this and hallelujah Yahweh this and we can jump around, but time will tell what's in you. When you begin in this press of Yah. Time will tell. This, this press of Yah, this, this is, is the, the extent of Yah's judgment. What is the extent? It's the limit that Yah is going to push his people to. It's a point, a degree, that Yah is going to push his people to to see what's really in them. But Yah knows what's in us. Hallelujah. He knows what's in you. We can sit here and look all pious. 
And we can play this game. We can come here as a formality. Something that we're just used to doing. Hallelujah. But y'all know for sinners. That's why he's going to allow this press. He's going to allow his people to be in the same press as the wicked. And you will see as I begin to read here in Joel. Turn with me to Joel 3 and 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to realize what, what was happening here. And this, this part was going to say, Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat you, beat your plowshares into swords and your plowshares into spears. Let the weak say that I am strong. Hallelujah. See, say, prepare for war, conditions of y'all. All this that you've heard, all this that, that's within you, it says, beat that into a sword. Stand up with the sword of y'all, this word of y'all that you've heard, that you may battle against the wickedness of this time. Hallelujah. Of this old lamb. It says, assemble yourself. Come all you heathen, gather yourself together round about Yah, who will break your might. Joel 3 and 11. Cause your mighty ones to come down, O Yah. On down to 312. It says, let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will Yah sit to judge all the heathen on every side. You see, Yah is going to judge the Kodesh as well as the Unkodesh. This, this valley of Jehoshaphat, it was a big place where he called them all down. And he's going to wreak havoc upon them. That's why we, we, need, we should have this press within us. Because, see, we're going to be in there. We're going to be right along with them. But, see, we're going to have something within us. We need this press within us that we can stand, that we can go through the battle, that Yah is going to prepare for this people. He's going to call upon his old land. That should be something deeply, richly within us. Hallelujah. As the people of Yah, we shouldn't be waving to the left or waving to the right. We should be a steadfast people headed straight towards that gate unto Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. And Joel 3 and 13 say, put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come. Get down, for the wine press is full. The vats, the fats of the wine overflow. For their wickedness is great. Yahweh is going to press the wicked by his judgment. That is why he judges us. That is why he takes us through a trial or a different circumstance. That is why Yah does it, to prove what's in us. And, and you notice that if you go through a thing, and you, you notice right at the end of it is, is, is when it really gets tough to where you rather just say, forget it. That's when Yah is about to do his work. When, when you've been pressed to that limit, to where Satan is coming, he's battling your mind to, to where you're about to say, man, forget this. That's when Yah is going to kick in. That's when his Ruah is going to say, okay, I got it now. And that's all we have to do. In this press of life, we press as far as we can. And we leave it in Yah's hand. Yah will take care of it. He will handle it. Hallelujah. That's all you have to do as people of Yah. But see, we, we try to do it ourselves. We can't do it ourselves. There's no way. You look at the mess that we've gotten ourselves into so far. Hallelujah. Look at our lives before we met Yah. Look at our lives even as Yah has found us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when we put our little two cents in, when we try to do it yes. as a people of Yah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's a press in you and you are sincere, and there's a thing that you're struggling with, a thing that you're going through, a trial that, that, that you're battling, if you want deliverance, you press, you do all that the Torah has told you to do, and then you stand as the tree planted by the rivers of water, and you just wait upon Yah. He would do the thing. And that's all we have to do as people of Yah. 
Prove y'all to be a lie. And he's not going to lie. If he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. You're still sitting here today, aren't you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all's going to do what he says he's going to do. His word would not go out and return void unto him. His word is going to complete what he says it's going to do. Hallelujah. I told y'all. And we must have this desire. Let me read on. We must have desire. As, as Saul speaks of, it says, I press, I strive, I pursue towards the mark. Yeah. Hallelujah. The goal the, for the prize of the higher calling. Yeah. Earnestly endeavor to acquire the truth of Yah. Hallelujah. And that's what we must do. To strive in all truth. To be under pressure. If you are sincere and you are serious and your heart is sold out unto y'all, you want to be tried. You want y'all to try you. You want to be tested. Then you can see, oh, I need to pull up here. I need to pull up there. Any ball player that, that plays ball, if he's, if he's sold out, if, if, he's a, if, if he's a true baller, he want to play against the best one. He want to be tried by the best one. He don't want to play them boys he know he can be. He want to go up against the one that's going to try him. Hallelujah. And a true player, a true player that, that wants to prove that he is the best, he wants to be around a coach that is the toughest coach. He don't want the soft coach. Oh, you played good. You played a good game. No, he wants a coach that even though he, he played well, he wants the coach that's going to tell him, man, you sorry thing. You should have played. You should have done this. You should have done that. Come on here, boy. You could have done better than that. That's the, that's, that's the kind of, of, of coach a true player wants to be around. And that's what we should be as conditions of, as conditions of y'all. We should want to be around those that are real. Not the silly ones, not the foolish ones, but those that are real, those that are sober. Hallelujah. That, that's going to try your lab to, to make you pull up, to see where you fall short. Hallelujah. If you are real, if there's a press, that's within you. You're pressing towards this mark, as, as Shaul talks about here. If you're pressing towards that mark of the higher calling, you want to be able to look back and say, man, I was a mess last week. Yeah. Look back and decide, man, I got a long way to go. Yeah. Not this high-minded, yeah. fat-headedness, thinking because of your title or, or, or something that you do or, yeah. or, or your, your position. Yeah. Uh, makes you any better than the next or, 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 or so, so that should be a, a, a ruach of humility yes. that you may be a strength to your brother and sister yes. not a fat headness not an arrogance yes. hallelujah. hallelujah total y'all yeah. what is this press of y'all it it's, it's, it's going to be a suffering a persecution in this pursuit of y'all hallelujah we should strive. That there should be a striving in us to seek after the Torah of Yah, to want to know the things of Yah, that we may better ourselves, that we, that we may walk with more of a strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That in the times to come, that when, when things do get tough, and they are going to get tough, that we will be able to go through them the way Yah wants us to. Hallelujah. We must be earnest. Hallelujah. We as a people, we have to press hard when the press is upon us. See, as I said earlier, a true player, when the press is upon him, when the coach is riding his back, it makes him press even more. It makes him perform more. And that's how we should be as a people of Yah. When we hear the word of Yah preach and it cuts us and, and it digs into our lives, it should make us, as we leave out here, make us want to be better ox, better coatees, to draw closer and more nigh unto Yah. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to read this example here. Yahshua. When Yahshua heals, heals the sick of palsy. Turn with me to Mark 2 and 1. Marcus 2 and 1. It says, and again, Yahshua entered into Capernaum. After some days, and it became known that Yahshua was in the house. So the word got out that Yahshua was there. Yes. 
And immediately, immediately, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. See, everyone's pressing. No, not even around the door. And it was packed everywhere. And Yahshua preached the word to them. And they come to Yahshua bringing one sick of palsy, who was carried by four men. Now, are we willing today, conditions of Yah, do we have that type of press in us, or are we just pressing for ourselves? See, right here it says there were four men that was carrying the sick and palsy, so they, have to ha they had to have some type of press in them to be carrying this one that, that they can't even walk for himself. They had to have some type of something in them, some kind of press. This is my all. Hallelujah. We're pressing together. Do we feel that way today in our lives? Are we pressing together? No. I want to be around those people, yeah. those oxen conditions, that if I'm sick, they're not going to leave me out. Hallelujah. They're going to bring me also. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 That's the kind of ruah that we should have, one for the other. Yeah. Hallelujah. That that should be a press, not just for us, but for the body also, yeah. for our, our ox and our coatees. Yeah. Hallelujah who was carried by four men, Mark 2 and 4. And when they could not come near to Yahshua for the press, they uncovered the roof. Is that not a press? Four men carry an ark. And they go through the roof. Come on, that took some press in there. Come on, y'all ain't hear me. That took some press in there. Huh? And they uncovered the, the roof where Yahshua was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed where in the sick of palsy lay. What a press. Mark 2 and 5. It says, when Yahshua saw their faith, it says their faith. Not just the one sick of palsy. He said, when Yahshua saw their face, faith, he said to the sick of palsy, son, your sins be forgiven. Do we not want our sins to be forgiven today? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So let us press as conditions of Yah. Hallelujah. That we press for the things of Yahshua. That our sins may be forgiven. Hallelujah. We must have this kind of pressing in the battles of, ahead of us. The battle ahead, conditions of Yah, is going to take great resolve with, with, within our lives, within our hearts. What is resolve, Shimri? A resolve is to separate. It's going to separate us from our sins. That's the purpose of this press. That's why Yah is going to have us in the press, to separate us from our arrogance, from our ways, from our kinsmen, from the things that we esteem, we put more time in, we put more effort toward than Yahshua, than Yah. That is the great resolve of the heart. It's going to separate. It's separate. And we have to suffer. There's no other way around it. We have to suffer, conditions of Yah, to overcome. We have to. That's the only way that we're going to make it. We have to suffer to overcome. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me read this account, this couple of scriptures here about Shaul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Shaul, he, he blessed y'all for comfort. He blessed him and deliverance out of troubles out of the deliverance of the troubles that, that he encountered. And we must do the same as Shaul. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 1, and I'm going to read down through verse 10. Hallelujah. Shaul. An apostle of Yahshua Hamashiach, by the will of Yah and Timothy, our brother, Israelite congregation of Yah, which is at Corinth, with all the Israelite conditions which are in Achaia. The free unmerited Ahava and favor be to you and shalom for Yah, our Abba, and from Yahshua Hamashiach. 
2 Corinthians 1 and 3. Blessed be Yah, even the Abba of Yahshua, our Messiah, the Abba of mercies, and the mighty one of all comfort. Do we hear that? The mighty one of, of all comfort. So regardless of what you're going through, Yah will bring you through. Hallelujah. If you're suffering for Yah and not for your sins, he makes it hard if, you, if you're sinning and you're suffering, as, I, as you'll see as I go on in this, this, this message. 2 Corinthians 1 and 4. It says, Yahweh comforts us in all our tribulations. It didn't say some. It said in all our tribulations, regardless of what they may be, regardless of, 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 of how trying they may be. It says, Yahweh comforts us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them that are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of Yah. Do we understand that conditions of Yah? If we have gone through a thing and we made it through, and we made it to the end, and we made it to where we overcame the thing, then a, a, a Koti or Ark that's going through it, you may be able to, to talk to them and say, Ark, look, this is what I've done. This is how I, I got through that. You understand, because this is y'all. That, that is what this is saying. That's why us, as conditions of y'all, even the older ones, there should be an example. I don't care what we go through for the younger ones, the ones that have really hadn't been tried in, in anything yet. Us older ones that have experienced things in life, that has went through things in life. Hallelujah. We should be able to be able to instruct a younger Ark or Koti in, in that thing. Hallelujah. The older mothers, the Zarkanes, hallelujah. Those are Zarkanes, the older Zarkanes that have experienced things in life. Hallelujah. We should be able to, look, son, this is how I handle that. This is what you do. Get on your knees. Go pray. There's nothing prayer cannot conquer if you give it unto Yah. Hallelujah. One in five. For as the suffering of Messiah abound in us, so our comforts also abound in Messiah. Hallelujah. And whether we be afflicted, it is for our consolation and salvation. So we're going to have to suffer. We're going to have to. It's for our salvation. To strengthen us, to bring us closer unto Yah. For our salvation, which is the effectual in the enduring of the same suffering, which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for our consolation and our salvation. And the consolation is nothing but to console or comfort. Hallelujah. That's what the suffering is for. So don't let Satan play in your mind like, why me? Why this? No, you go through the thing. You stand strong. You stick your chest out and say, okay, Satan, bring it on. I got you. I got your number. Bring it on. And that's how we should be. As conditions of beat this, this plowshare into this, this plowshare into a sword. And stand with the sword of the Ruah of Yah. Tell him to come on. Come on here, Satan. I got you. Hallelujah. Total Yah. One and seven. Where was I at? Seven. And hope of your of you in steadfastness, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation. Hallelujah. So if we partake of this, for y'all says, my yoke is easy. It's hard to go out there and partake of sin. I'm telling you. This is easy. You look at them that are sin. They're unhealthy. They look unhealthy. If we here as, as conditions of y'all, will partake of this suffering of Yah, about in his Torah. The Torah tells us how to eat, how to conduct ourselves. I don't see where it's hard at. Everything is in this Torah. But see, when we go outside of that, that's when we're going to reap what we had sown. It's, it's easy. That out there is hard. You can say what you will or may. That's hard. I know I can speak from experience. Hallelujah. 1 and 8, 2 Corinthians 1 and 8. For we would not, Israelite, 
ox, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we are pressed out of measure? Do we hear that condition? We are pressed out of measure? Pressed out of measure? You, you've been pushed to your point. Those of you that, that, have, that has ever had any kind of confrontation with, 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 with another one, you, you're not going to fight until that one pushes you past your limit to where you say, all right, now, that's it. It's time for me, me and you to knuckle up. It's a push out of measure. Push to that point to where you say, that's it. No, no, let's go. Me and you. Hallelujah. Trouble pushed out of measure above strength in so much that we despair even our life. We are pushed out of measure above our strength. When we are pushed to that point, then that's when I said earlier, you wait upon Yah. Yeah. When you've done all you can do, yeah. you stand and you wait upon Yah. Yeah. And it says that, but they were pushed so much to where they despaired even life. Is that not trying? We hadn't been tried to that point. Yeah. Is that not trying, conditions of Yah? Is that not being tried? Yeah. We must press, conditions of Yah. This is being pressed. Hallelujah. That they despaired even life. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 1 and 9, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in Yah, which raised us from the dead. And that was we must do as conditions of Yah. Trust in Yah. Did he not raise us from the dead? Were, were we not walking around here with, with, with no life before we come into Hamashiach? Did we not have, we didn't have any life. We had no substance. We had no purpose. This has purpose. This, this makes your life have purpose. This is what could complete you. Hallelujah. You say what you will have made. Once you come unto Yah, this is, what, this is what fills that void that is within you. That's what the world is out there seeking for. That they're seeking, trying to find that comfort that they, they think is in other things, but it's right here. Yah has it right up under their nose. Hallelujah. This is what the world is seeking for, but they will never find it. Because they're corrupt. And they don't want to abide by the things of Yah. This is what completes a man. Even as I was younger, it always say, I would always say, there's something missing. Have you all ever said that? Something is missing. Something is still not right. I'm still not complete. I've done this. I've done that. I've had this. I've had that. Something is just not right. Until you come until Hamashiach. Until he reveals his truth unto you. Hallelujah. Until he reveals his truth unto you. And your nephesh is full. You are complete. Nothing in this world is going to do that. Only Hamashiach. This is what completes you. As a people of Yah. Hallelujah. This is what does it. Nothing else. I don't care what it is. Have you ever felt that way? I know I have. I've felt that way. And once y'all saved me, and I said, this is it. This is it. This is what I've been looking for. This is what I need. This is what completes me. This is what makes me whole. Hallelujah. There's nothing else. Hallelujah. This is what I need right here. This is it. From the foundations of the old land. Hallelujah. From the foundations of the old land. He chose us. He's given us a chance. Hallelujah. From the foundations of the old land. Hallelujah. He's given us a chance, conditions of y'all. From the foundations. Hallelujah. This is it. So I'm going to press. Hallelujah. There's nothing else like it. Nothing else completes you. But this Torah, y'all. We're going to be pressed. It's going to be beyond our strength. That's why we must trust in y'all. We're going to be pressed. We, as I said, we should want to be pressed. Hallelujah. If you're real, you want to be pressed. You want to say, okay, come on, try me, Satan. Come on. Show me what you got. I know what I got. And I know what you're telling me. I have scriptures here that says it's a lie. Hallelujah. And that's how you talk to them. Then come on, bring it on. When you say this is going to happen, that's going to happen. You say, I'm not going to be healed. I'm not going to get through this. That's not what this, this, this right here says. That's a lie. And that's how you talk to them. You tell them, bring it on. I got you. Hallelujah. 
Let us look at some more examples of this press, this pressing which we should have. Turn with, with me to Judges 16 and 13. Shop Tim, 16 and 13. And Delilah said to Samson, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me with what your might be bound. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head with the web, I'm going to read from 1613 on down to 17. Okay, 16 to 14. And she tightened it with the pen and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awake out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. And she said to him, How can you say you are hover me when your love is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and has not told me wherein your great strength lies. Now see, she, she's wearing on him. And that's how Satan, that's how he, he does us as people of Yah. He wants our strength. Hallelujah. He wears on us. Huh? This, that, that's part of the press. He presses on her. You see how she has a beauty. She, she, she's shapely. And, and she's wearing on this, this big strong man. Those scriptures say, give not thy strength unto the woman. And it says in Judges 16, 16, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul, his nephesh, was vexed to death. Hallelujah. You see what she's doing to him? She's riding him. She's putting it on him. She's smelling good. She's got him. And she's working him. She's working him like a whore. Hallelujah. And that is what the, the enemy is trying to do to vex us. As she did to Samson. She wants him to give up. She, she wants his strength. And that's how Satan is, is trying to do us today. But we have to press on. We have to press, as I said earlier, towards this mark of the higher calling. Hallelujah. 16 and 17. And what did Samson do? He says that he told her all his heart. And he said to her, there has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite. I have been a Nazarite to Yah from my mother's womb. And so have we conditions of Yah. This motherling Ruah that Yah has allowed to govern us. We have been Nazarites. That's just, that's just a vow unto Yah. To serve him, to be devoted, to not turn back, with soul out. That's what Samson was. It was a mothering spirit. His mother did this. She she give him unto Yah. Hallelujah. And if and if I be shaven, then my strength would go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Hallelujah. And that's it. If we give our strength unto Satan. That's what he wants. It says, and if, and if I be shaven, Satan wants our covering. Hallelujah. He wants our covering. That he may have all of our heart. And if he gets it, if he gets it, then what do we become? As it says here, we become as any other with no strength, with no life of Yah, with no imuna. Hallelujah. With no shalom. Hallelujah. And that's what she wanted. And she got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us as, as condition for y'all. Let us stand strong. Let us press. Let us not give our covering of Hamashiach yeah. unto Satan. Hallelujah. Let us walk strong. Let us walk in strength. Hallelujah. Let us not be taken by this world. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there to do. Cope for y'all. If we are in sin, Yah will press upon us when we are walking in sin and make it hard for us. 
Let us walk cadestly, Kadesliya. If we are walking in sins, it's going to be a tougher route, a tougher road. Hallelujah. As I was looking, as I look in the paper and I see those, a picture every now and again of those that, that I grew up with. I see their pictures and, I, and some of them look like old men. I, and I'm just like, wow. And I just told them, my Abba, you know, that he has given me a chance and I, that I took heed. Because I will be, as I read earlier, just as the average man. With no strength of Yah, with no Imuna. Hallelujah. Just as miserable as they are. For they look bad. They look old. They look sad. And you will see as I read on in this message what that type of sin it does to you. How it takes your countenance. It takes your health. It takes every bit of fiber out of you. That there is no substance. That there is nothing. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalms 38 and 1. It's talking about this sin. Hallelujah. O Yahweh, rebuke me, rebuke me not in your wrath, neither chasten me in your hot displeasure. For your arrows have pierced me, and your hand pressed me sore. When we walk in sin against Yah, it says, for your arrows have pierced me. What is the arrows? It's this word of Yah. When you know you're doing wrong, you know you're not doing right, you know you're full of error, you're full of pride, you're full of you know what. You're full of it. You're full of dumb. And it says, your arrows have pierced me and your hand presses me sore. What is the hand of Yah? It is the power of his word. You know it's pressing you. You know it's pressing you, but still you keep fighting. You keep thinking it's, it's going to work your way. As Jeremy, I said earlier, it's not going to work your way. You might as well forget it. It's going to have to go according unto the Torah of Yah. We can't apply the things of this world and apply it to this, this walk. It, that doesn't work. We got to take this trash out of us that Yah may put in the new wine, that we may walk and that we may have this press. Because whether you believe me or not, whether you take heed to what I am saying or not, this thing is coming down. Hallelujah. It's coming down, conditions of Yah. Hallelujah. It's coming down. Whether we want to play and sneak and think that it's not, it's coming down. So let us be as the five wise. Let us fill our lanterns now. So when the time comes, we will have all to endure what Yah is going to bring upon this old land. It goes on down to Psalms 38 and 3. I'm going to read all the way down to Psalms 38 and 11. Psalms 38 and 3 say, There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger. Neither is there any shalom in my bones because of my sins. And you know when you're doing wrong. We know when we're doing wrong. We're looking over our shoulder, worrying about who's going to see. We know when it's wrong. We need to be honest with ourselves. It says there, there, are no, there is no shalom in my bones. What does bones represent? That's, that, that's the core, the, the inner part, the heart. There's no shalom in your leg. And you know there's no shalom. But we put on this fake, this fictitious uh, ritual like, oh, we love y'all so we're dancing around. There's no shalom. It says, for my, my iniquities are going over my head. As a heavy bird, burden, they are too heavy for me. And if you, are, if you have this press in you, you can tell when one is, there, there is no happiness. There is no shalom. They may put on, they may try to act, but you can see right through it. If you have this press, if you have the Ruach of Yah. We've seen too many of them come through here. They put on and play like they got this and they got that, and they don't have a thing. Not a thing. We've seen it too many times. They're full of sins. And you can see it. You can look in their eyes and tell them, he ain't real at all. She's full of dumb. You can see it. We've seen too many of them come through here. Those of you that are here, you know what I'm talking about. Psalms 38 and 5, my wounds stink. And what are the wounds? My wounds stink. That's your, 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 your mental 
aspect. It stinks. No one can say nothing to you. Hallelujah. No one can instruct you. No one can tell you nothing. Your head is fat. Your wound, you stink. And are corrupt because of my foolishness. And that's why we stink today, Christians of y'all, because of our foolishness, our foolish mindset, our foolish ways, things that are not appertain unto the things of y'all. That's why we stink today. And it goes on to 38 and 6, I am troubled, I am bowed down greatly, I go mourning all the day long. For my loins are filled with burning, there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore, broken, and you can see it upon them. There is no life. There is nothing. I have roared by reason of stress of my heart. Yahweh, all my desires is before you, and my groaning is not hid from you. My heart throbs. My strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also is gone. Did I not say that earlier? It says, as for the light of my eyes, it is also gone. You can look in the eyes and tell there's nothing there. There's corruptness. As I drive out here on this highway, and I look at those people driving, people doing their thing, and I wonder, yeah, I know their minds are not on you. I don't wonder what they're thinking about because I know it's nothing. But as I look at them, I say, so sad. All these people, millions of people, you just see them everywhere. And there's a press for what they want to do. There is no press of y'all. And you look into their eyes, you talk with them. Some is just a, it's a fictitious smile. And, but you look in the eyes, you can tell, like, she's so miserable. At, whether at home with her husband or at her job. or He's a crazy thing. You look in his eyes, you can see just the, the demented form. You can see it within their eyes. And I look at people and I talk with them. And I look dead in their eyes and you can see it. The word of Yah is right. It's not wrong. The eyes, the windows, to the soul of the man. It says, for my lovers, my friends stand alone from me, from my sword, and my kinsmen stand afar off. And that's what will happen. No one's going to want to deal with you, be around you. Hallelujah. But we must press on, conditions of y'all. We must press. Hallelujah. When we are pressed, we must call upon y'all. Hallelujah. Look at Joshua as Sharak writes about the battle of Joshua. Most of you all may, may not have this. I'm going to read uh, Sharak 46, 1 through 6. Hallelujah. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was mighty in war and was the successor of Moshe in prophesying. He became in accordance with his name, a great savior of Yah's elect, to take vengeance on his enemies that rose against them, so that he might set Israel in their inheritance. See, Joshua, he was a mighty warrior. He was a successor of Moshe. I mean, he would be the man when Moshe is out of the way to, to stand in his place. To stand with the Torah of Yah. For the conditions of Yah. That they might reap their inheritance. And it says, how great and splendid he was when he lifted his hands and stretched out his sword against the cities. Who before him ever stood so firm? firm for Yahweh himself brought his enemies to him. Yahweh himself brought his enemies to him. Yah is going to allow the enemies to do what they're doing. Hallelujah. That we may be tried. It may prove the press that is within us. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say, Sirach 46 and 4, was not the son held back by his hand and did not one day become as long as two? Shirak 46 and 5. He called upon the Most High, the Mighty One, when his enemies pressed him. And that's all we have to do. We must call upon the Most High when our enemies press us. Hallelujah. 
that we may get the resolve from Abba Yahweh. We call upon our, our Abba. We go upon our knees with a sin, sincere lead. Hallelujah. We fall prostrate before Yah. Hallelujah. And it says, his enemy pressed him on every side. And the great Yah answered him with hailstones of mighty power. That's what the word of Yah says. Yah answers. He answered him. Hallelujah. You're going through your ailments. You're going through your battles. It says on every side. Have you not been in that situation? This is happening. That is happening. This back here is happening. Then straight ahead, that's happening. It's like, Yah, what am I going to do? It tells you right here to do. Call upon Yah. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to confuse you. He's the author of confusion. Hallelujah. He wants to confuse you. He wants you to give up. He wants you to lose your press for Yah. Hallelujah. Totally Yah. That's what he wants. It says, Yah answered him with hailstones of mighty power. Hallelujah. He hurled down war upon the nation and at the descendants of Beth Haran. He destroyed those who resisted. He destroyed those that resisted conditions of Yah. So that the nations might know his armament, that he was fighting in the sight of Yah, for he, Kodeshly, followed the mighty one. Joshua Kodeshly, it says here holy, but he, with all his live, he followed Yah. He pressed, there was a press within him that nothing could move it, nothing could shake it. Nothing could, could take it from him. Nothing. The more he fought a soldier, a, a, a warrior like this, the more he fought, the more he battled, the stronger he became. Hallelujah. Yeah. And, if, and if there's a press in you, if, and if you are true, the more you battle, the tougher you get, the stronger you are. Hallelujah. If you all understand what I'm saying. If you are a true soldier, if there is a press within you, regardless of what's coming against you, how the word is tearing you up, you, you battle even the harder. Yeah, yeah. Nothing's going to turn you back. Yeah. If you're true, and this thing is real within your leg, if there's a press, a true player in, in, in the peak of the game in fourth quarter, that's where he wants to be. Give me the ball. Yeah. Do we want the ball today, conditions of y'all? That's what a true player does. A true one. Say, give me the ball. I got it. I'll take control. I'll put it on my shoulders. If we lose, I'll suffer the thing. Hallelujah. That's what a true player does. A true one that's true unto y'all. He said, give it to me. I got it. I got these boys. Bring it on. Hallelujah. Totally y'all. Shirak 11 11 says, there is a man who labors and toils and presses on, but in so much the more is want. And that's what I'm trying to, to convey unto you today, because this is of y'all. It says, this man, he labors, he toils, and he presses on. And he says, but so much the more he wants, even more. He wants more. Bring it on. He wants more. That ain't enough. He wants more battle. He said, where the rest of them at? Come on. That's a press there. That's the kind of press I want to have in my life. Regardless of what's going on, what I'm going through, Okay, what's next? I want my heart, my mind to be prepared that way. What's next? Hallelujah. And we should want the same thing. We should have this press. We should press towards Yah in that manner. That regardless of what we go through, what the circumstance is, what our ailments are, there should be a press within us. Okay, I'm dealing with this now. All right, got over that. Where's the next thing? Okay, total Yah. And press. And press. Those are the kind of conditions and ox I want to be around. Not no panty waste. Not no murmurs and complainers. I want to be around the tough ones. The ones that I can look over, even when I'm feeling a little like, man, and he's over there pumping it out. Okay, that puts something within me. And that's the way we should be as people of Yah. We should want to be around those that have that press within them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the way we should be. We should want to be around those that have a press, that are pressing for the things of Yah. Hallelujah. Totally Yah. We must have this kind of attitude. To press on. Hallelujah. To get Yah's 
blessings. We must have that type of attitude. Oh, we're not going to make it, conditions of y'all. There's no way we will make it. The little things that we're going through now, and that's shaking us. Hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. The little things that we endure now, and that's shaking us. There's no way we're going to make it. There's no way. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Mark 3 and 9. We must have that type of attitude, condition, that, that nothing turns us back, regardless of what it may be. Hallelujah. A kinsman, nothing. A house, a car, nothing should be able to turn us back. We must be set. We must be locked in until this thing of y'all. Hallelujah. Mark is 3 and 9. It says, And Yahshua spoke to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude. Because of the multitude, lest they should distress him. So he was telling him to prepare me a little getaway because I know that they're going to, to press me. It says, For he had healed many insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues. Do we not, as the people of y'all today, do we not have plagues today? Things that are hindering us from this press of y'all? Things that are bombarding our minds? Well, he said this, or he's this, he has this position, or, or, or she does that and I don't do it. They're just the little small things, little penny any things. It's they're so minute. We all have to enter in at the straight gate. Regardless of what you're doing, regardless of your job, regardless of my job, we all, as the people of Yah, we all have to enter in the same way. Hallelujah. It's so simple. We all have to enter in the same way. It says, For he healed many as so much that they pressed upon him, for to touch him as many as had plagues. It says, only thing they wanted to do was just a touch. Just a touch. And that's all we have to do is condition y'all. Get upon our knees and just cry y'all just to touch y'all. Just a touch to, to, to take me through this next day. Just a touch y'all to get me through this evening. Just a touch y'all to take me through this week. That's all we have to cry out. If you think y'all were not deliverance, oh y'all this is hurting me. Oh y'all this happened. Just say, you get on your knees and you cry before y'all. Y'all just a touch. That's all I need. Just give me just, just a small scintilla, Abba Yahweh. Just a small scintilla. Hallelujah. Just a small scintilla, y'all. That's all we need today. It doesn't take much from y'all. You just ask for just a small scintilla. And he'll clear your mind. Let, let you see, oh, that's petty. I'm not worried about that. And you'll stand strong. You, there will be more pressing you. And we get upon our knees and just say, y'all, just a touch. I'm your, I'm your ark. I'm your condition. Just a touch, y'all. You think he won't do it? That's what his word said. He would do it. Hallelujah. Mark 3 11 it said and the unclean spirits when they saw him fell down before him and cried saying you are the son of Yah who we must press to get Yahweh's healing of our hearts conditions of Yah there must be a press there must be a press within our lives I'm going on to uh, turn with me to Mark 5 and 25 and it says Mark 5 Marcus 5 and 25, it says, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years, and had suffered many things. 12 years, could this be, y'all? Can you imagine that? 12 years? How many years have we had our issue of blood? How many years? And we're still in the same spot, marching in the same spot. Not able to look back and say, man, I was a mess. We're still doing the same old things. Marching in the same spot. Spot. We have to pull up as conditions of y'all. We got to get this press within our legs. Come on, 12 years. How many years have you been doing the same old thing? Same old thing. Over and over. Same old. No difference. No one can look at you and say, oh, man, that ox changed, man. Man, he's pulling up. Oh, that, oh, that Cote, she's, she's changing. Huh? The same old thing we struggle with. Because there's no press in us. There's no sincerity unto the things of y'all. Hallelujah. We need that. I know I do. I need it. Hallelujah. There is no press. The same old thing. We should be able to look back and see where we've moved from. It's the same old thing. Hallelujah. 
says a certain woman has an issue of blood for 12 years and suffered many things of many physicians and spent, and spent all. She suffered things of many positions. Have we not tried to go this way, go that way? As Ahab, as I can't bend him, he told us, you can't go around him. You can't go under him. You're not going over him. You got to come in at the straight gate. See, she sought positions, everything, all kind of things to try to circumvent the matter. Hallelujah. Yeah. It says, and had suffered many things, many physicians, trying to seek another way, and had spent all that she had. She had. She had and was nothing better, but rather worse. Have we not tried it our way, as I came to Rome, I said earlier? Yeah. We tried it our way so many times. Yeah. We tried to go this way, tried to go that way. It's not going to work. Hallelujah. It's not going to work. We must come unto Yahshua HaMashiach. Mark 5 and 27. Then she had heard of Yahshua. Have we heard of Yahshua? Could this is of Yah? And she came in the press. You see this? And she came in the press behind and touched his garment. And that's what we must do. We must press that we may get a touch from Yah. Just a touch from him. That we may endure this thing that is coming upon this old land. For she said, if I may but, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. Do you hear the faith here? Do you hear the emuna? Do you, do you see the press? Do you hear the press? She, she believed. And if we get upon our knees, we cry out to Yah, he will open up our eyes. We'll be able to see our corruptness, our wickedness. That's how you get a touch from y'all. That's how he delivers you. You know your sins. I know my sins. We know what we're doing wrong. We know what we're not doing right. Hallelujah. If we would just get upon our knees and, and, and cry out to y'all for just a touch, he will show you. But as long as, as, as you think that, that you, as long as you don't identify it, then y'all can help you. Hallelujah. We need this prayer condition for y'all. We need it. That's the only way that we're going to make it in this hour. It says, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And immediately, do you hear this condition of y'all? And immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And that's what we need, just to touch. And our fountain, this blood, the things that, that are circumventing us from serving Yah, it will be dried up. One day you will look back and say, man, I don't act like that no more. Yeah. One day you'll say, man, I don't do that no more. Man, I don't get angry like that no more. Man, I can receive instruction. Hallelujah. Man, that's all right. I didn't know I act like that. Because there's no press. Once you get this press within you, then Yah can show you because he's going to do it with out your consent or with your consent. He's going to press you till you give up or he's going to press you until you humble yourself unto him. Hallelujah. And it says the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed. And you would know when you have been healed by Yah because you will feel it. There, there will be an overwhelming joy and your ox and your coaches will be able to look at you and say, man, that's, that's something different about that, that ox. Man, you, you would know because your light is going to shine as Zachary ben will always say, we need to be cities that sit upon a hill yes. that our light may shine and there will be a light about you. A light. That people will be drawn to you. Aren't people, are people not drawn un, 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 to, to a light at night or whenever? Oh, man, that's pretty. Look at where that's lit up. You go uptown, Charlotte, at night and look at those buildings. Oh, man, look at the light. We should be like that light. Let's sit upon a hill. When there's a hill, 
of Yah, it will be known. People will see it. Mark 5 and 30. And Yahshua immediately, knowing in himself that virtue has gone out of him, and turned around to the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Mark 5 and 31. And his disciples, his disciples said to him, You see the multitudes pressing on you. And you say, and you ask, who touched me? All these people? Mark 5 and 32. And Yahshua looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling. Do we have any fear and trembling today? He said this woman was fearing and trembling. Is there any trembling tomorrow, today anymore upon the conditions of Yah? As we go upon our knees crying out to Yah, is there any fear and trembling? We've lost the fear of Yah. There is no trembling. This thing has become just a ritual unto us as a people of Yah. We have to get back unto the old time way. That when we first found Yah, He first found us. That He first revealed Himself unto us. He said there was a fear and trembling. Knowing what was done in her. See, knowing what was done in her. That, was, that is what caused the fear and trembling in her. Because Yah had moved upon her. He was in her. He was dwelling within her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And look at this. And came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Do we tell all the truth? Do we fall before Yah and just tell Yah the truth? Okay, Yah, this, this, and that. He already knows it. But we have to confess it yes. to, to bring about the healing. We have to confess it as the people of Yah. Hallelujah. We have to confess. Then Yah can deal with us. Yeah. But if we go with this, this lackadaisy prayer, oh, Yah, help me, this is that. No, that's not going to get it. You got to be truthful. He says she told all the truth. She told him all the truth. Like, oh, my Abba, oh, Yahshua. I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. I was this way. Oh, I'm so sorry. Because of what was in her. Because she had felt a touch from him. She had been changed. Her eyes had been opened. Hallelujah. She no more looked through the glass dimly. Hallelujah. She could see now. She can see sin. She, know, she knew the difference between sin. There was no more justification of her ways. Hallelujah. So she told all in Mark 35 and 34. And Yahshua said unto her, Daughter, your amuna has made you whole. And as I said earlier, that is what makes us whole. Once we come into Yahshua, and we are born again, and he fills our lives and our ruahs, and that is what completes us. That is what makes us whole. Hallelujah. Nothing else out there is going to do it. That is, he says, and he says, daughter, your amuna has made you whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says, go in Shalom. And be whole of your plague. Your plague. That means she doesn't have to deal with that anymore. Get ready for the next battle. Get ready for the next press. For there is going to be a press. And Yahshua is going to bring the press upon his people. Hallelujah. That it may prove what's in us as conditions of Yah. He's going to do it. Whether you concur with it or not, he's going to do it. Yes. We must all press in Yahshua yes. to hear the Torah of Yah. We must all press. Yeah. There is a press today. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Luke 5 and 1. And it came to pass that as the people press upon him to heal the word of Yah. Are we pressing today, condition of Yah, to hear the word of Yah? Or do we come in here like, well, we, we have service again. Or is there, is there a press within us where we want to hear the word of Yah, that he may strengthen this press, that we may press on? Hallelujah. Is there a press in us today, condition of Yah, to where we want to hear the word of Yah? Is there a press? Or is it that, well, we heard the word of Yah today in the tabernacle. That's it, you know. I don't want to sit around and talk about Yah no more. Is there a press in us today that we want to hear the word of Yah, not just in here, but around our ox, our cotees? 
Is they oppressed? Do, do you want to talk about Yahweh or the, the, the frivolous things of this world? Is there a press to hear the word of Yah? Is these people here pressed to hear the word of Yah? Is there a hunger? Hallelujah. Is there a hunger that this press that we may be strong, that we may be even stronger to hear the word of Yah? Is there a press? Hallelujah. It says here, it says, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of Yah, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And in my closing, Yah, hallelujah. It says, Here, as, as Joshua speaks unto the Pharisees, it says in Luke 16 and 4, I only have a few more scriptures. Luke 16 and 14, it says, and the, and the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all the things of all the things that Yahshua spoke. But they didn't hear because they, they, they were covetous. So all the things that they heard. But they were covetous. And they ridiculed him. Do we ridicule Yah today? Do we ridicule Yah? Hallelujah. Well, you say, well, no, Akshimri. I don't ridicule Yahweh today. Yes, we do, conditions of Yah. We ridicule Yah. I tell you how in a sense. Because we hear the word of Yah. We hear it preach. We read the word of Yah. And we do totally opposite. Hallelujah. We don't do what his word tells us to do. When it comes to us, we justify it. Hallelujah. So we ridicule him. We mock him, say, oh, yeah, I know what your word said, but this is my, my biological. This is my, my blood. Hallelujah. This is, this is my kinsman. Hallelujah. We ridicule y'all. We hear the word of y'all preach. We know what we're supposed to do. I can understand someone that hasn't got up to that level yet. I understand that. But those of us that have been here since almost day one, yes. we hear the word of Yah preach. We hear it telling us what we need to do, and we ridicule Yah. And Yah's not going to allow that. He's not going to allow. Hallelujah. And that's what we do as a people of Yah. We ridicule him. We say we don't, but we do. And Luke 16 and 15, and he said to them, you are they, as I just said, you are they which justify yourself before men. And we do that. We justify ourselves. We do. As a people of y'all, we justify ourselves. Now, if the Ark do this or the Cote do this, then we down on them. Or we, we ridicule them. We, we blaspheme them. But if we do it, we justify it. We justify ourselves. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now that's what it says. It says, you are they which justify yourself before men. We want to make ourselves look splendor. There is no spirit, there is no ruah of humility. It says, but Yahweh knows your left. Hallelujah. Yah knows our left today. We don't get by. He knows our left. It says, for that which is highly esteemed, amongst men is an abomination in the sight of Yah. Hallelujah. So when we highly esteem ourselves, we justify ourselves, you are in an abomination unto Yah. Whether you think so, or whether you think you know Yah, whether you think you love Yah or not, you are an abomination yeah. unto Yah. Yeah. And in my last scripture, it says, Luke, Luke 16 and 16, it says, the Torah and the prophets were unto Yohanan since that time. The kingdom of Yah is preached, and every man presses into it. You can't go into the kingdom of Yah, condition of Yah, unless you press in all the truth of Yah, in Yahshua HaMashiach. There, there's going to be a press. We must press. There is no way. It, say, it says, if the Kodesh shall scarcely make it, where shall, where shall the sinners and the un- Kodesh appear. Hallelujah. All this we're doing, separating ourselves, trying to, striving, pressing to, to live right, the scripture says that we're still going to scarcely make it. Do you hear that? We're still going to scarcely make it. Hallelujah. Scarcely. Do that even cross your mind? We're going to scarcely make it. 
We're not giving no, no ticket to where, okay, come on in. No, it says we're going to scarcely make it. That's what the word of y'all said, scarcely. By the skin of our teeth, we're going to scarcely make it. So it's, it's going to take a press, a continual press, not 100%, 110 it's, we're going to have to, it's going to be a continual press always. We can't become relaxed in Yah, in Hamashiach. There's no way. We can't, he's not even going to allow that. He's not going to allow us to become relaxed in him. Hallelujah. He's going to, he's going to keep it that way. Because if we get relaxed, then what happens? Leaven or sin moves in. He's going to keep it that way. We're going to have to battle. This is a battle, condition of y'all. Whether we believe that or not, we're going to have to battle. So we might as well scrap up our boot scraps. Get them scrapped up tight. And let's get ready. We need to be getting ready. We need to be putting on this press. Crying out to y'all, y'all help me. I need your help. For I know I do. I need y'all's help. This is a press. Satan is going to do all he can to destroy he goes about as a roaring lion. Doing what? Seeking who he may devour. And you think he's not on his job, and you know that he's on his job. You know what you battle with. You know he's on his job. You know he's not procrastinating. And he ain't missing a beat. You know that. Hallelujah. So let us, conditions of y'all, let us press. Let us Press towards the mark of the high calling. As conditions of Yah. That Yah may say, well done, my tub and faithful servant. Y'all can't you, Romeo? Hallelujah. To the Yah. Wasn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. As long as we walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, we must press. For we're in a time where this road is not going to be easy all the time. So it's important for us, as Akshimri explained unto us today, that, that we press, that we press on. Not only is Yahweh is going to press us by his judgment, by his Torah, by his Dabah, by his word, but we must also press. Press, press those things out of our mind that do not um, um, exalt our Yahweh, we must press those things out of our heart that send a stench before his presence. We must press conditions of Yahweh. Hallelujah. When we were in the world, even if you look at the world today, when there is someone that really wants something, and they want it bad, they do all that it takes to possess that thing. You got those that were that will stab a knife in one's back to get ahead, that will lie to get ahead. They do whatever it takes to get ahead in, in this race that they get what they want. They press, they stay up late, they work late. Whatever it takes. We must be of that same nature. Not that we do that which is wicked before Abba Yahweh, but that we do all that we can, conditions of Yahweh. Because even at your best day, that's, that's not enough. We must give all unto Yah. As Dr. Shimon would say, 100%, 110%, 120%. All week, if you can give 100%, I mean 150%, 200%, it's going to take all that you have. It's going to take a press to obtain that measure conditions of Yahweh. We can't just go sashaying into the kingdom, into the Melchud of Yah. That's, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. There must be a press. There must be an endurance that we must have as being a soldier, being a conditions of Yahweh. Just to add a little bit to what Ak Shimri um, exclaimed, taught us today, preached, proclaimed unto us concerning the press, my mind went back unto Job, unto Job. And we know, because most of us, we have heard that story or this example so many times of how um, his family, they were killed and destroyed. There was not one but a servant here, a servant there that was able to tell him of what happened to his inheritance, to his possessions. And he was tried. He was tempted. But yet in the end, Yahweh showed his power. Yahweh showed his might in that which he had put in Job, and that is his Torah. So I want to read, I want to start in chapter 2 of Job. 
even after all these things happen um, to him in that first chapter. I want to begin in the second chapter. He says, again, there was a day when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves before Almighty Yah. Don't you know that is what Satan does? Conditions of Yahweh. Because we strive to walk in his Torah and his Mitzvah. We're in the press. We're in the press. It seems like everything is going wrong. Everything's not going the way we planned it to go. This one passed. You had a family member to pass, or your, your job failed you, or you was laid off. It seemed like all these trials and these situations, these temptations all coming in as a flood. But they came to present themselves before Almighty Yahweh. And it says, and Satan, the enemy, that old snake, Satan, he came also among them to present himself before Yahweh. And Yahweh said, and, and Yahweh said unto him, Satan, from whence cometh you? Why have you come? Why have you gathered amongst this assembly? And Satan answered Yahweh and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And Yahweh said to say, has thou considered my servant, Yo? Yahweh said that unto Satan. Don't you want Yahweh to say that of us today? Have you considered my servant, Shimri? Have you considered my servant, Sakia? You can put your name in that spot. Are we those that walk in the Torah of Yahweh to the point where Yahweh can say, I have something for you to do. You're that bored. You're walking to and for. Have you considered my servant? Have you looked at this one? Have you tried this one? Even though in all his trials, yo, and what he was tested by, yet he stood and he brought the offerings before Almighty Yahweh. Are we doing that today, conditions of Yahweh? Are we bringing the, what is pleasing before Abba Yahweh, the offering? The offering of praise of Todah before Almighty Yahweh. Even though, as Ark Shimri said, even this time of press, when we're being tried, it seems like the weight of the world, of the enemy, of these things are just pressing upon our heads. Yet, are we still able to bring praises before Yahweh? Are we still yet able, as yo, to bring the offerings before Abba Yahweh? That we submit and that we obey his mitzvah and his commandments. That's what Yob did. And Yahweh said, um, there is none like him in all the earth. Can y'all always say that about us, individually, conditions of y'all, house of Israel, y'all? There's none like this one. There's none like this people. They have been tried. They have been tested. They have been put through the furnace of trials. No matter what the enemy bring, whatever I put upon them, they come forth as pure gold. Don't you know when you have a basket of grapes, and that's the... The, um, one of the only ways, those that stay by tradition, that make the wine and the juices, you have juices today, you just throw some fruit in there and it just chop it up and it sling the juice to the side. That, that's not a press. You don't get all the juices, yet in the pulp you still find juice there. But when you press, when there's a hard press, when there's weight put to that fruit or whatever um, you are trying to bring that juice out of, it gets it all out. It gets it all out. The trials that we go through, this press, it's going to get it all out, as Shimri said. The things that please Yah will be pressed out, and the things that do not please Yah, it will go to one side. It will go to the waste and be pressed out. That we can present it before Almighty Yahweh, pure and acceptable. But he says here that he's, a per he's perfect, and he is upright, and he is one that feareth me, that feareth Yahweh, and he escheweth evil. He don't walk and evil, but he goes around it. He avoids it. And still he holdeth fast to his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause. Don't you know Satan, he looks, he goes to and fro in the earth to destroy the house of Israel without a cause. He tries us without a cause. But yet we could come forth as Job did, one with a pure gold, tried, silver tried, 
Isn't that not what we want to do? When we're tried, when we press to come forth, that we show the power and the might of Yah, the thing that is in our heart, his word, his Torah, his Dubai. And Satan answered Yahweh and said, skin for skin, yea, all that the man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his, the bone of his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. Have we done the conditions of Yahweh? Have we cursed Yah? Have we denied the promises that he had given unto the house of Israel Yah for inheritance because of something we may be going through, because of something we may not understand for a time? We curse Yah. Yahweh, you said that you were going to do this, but what your covenant you made with me that you would not sin. See, we, we hold Yahweh to what he says. Yahweh, you said this. You said you would be there. Hallelujah. But were we in the place where we said we would be? As Akshimri said, because of our sins, we suffering because of our sins. Well, you deserve to suffer. May the judgment of Yahweh fall. But if you're where Yahweh wants you to be, then he will do all that he said he would do. See, we expect Yahweh to act. Act and do what he said he's going to do when we're in sin and iniquity and we're doing things that do not please him. Oh, I need you now. Oh, no. I got something for you. You should have been in the place where I said you should be in. You should have been there waiting for me. If you're in that trial, sure, I put that trial upon you to try your imuna, that you may grow, that you may become stronger. But see, you're going a path, and you took in a, a, a direction that I did not choose for you. And you are going to suffer. That is, that's just, isn't it? If you told your little one or your son, I don't want you going over that way, it's dangerous. Don't go over there, you may get hurt. And he goes there, and he gets hurt. Well, not only did he get hurt, but you're going to put something on his hips too. But if he's in the place where you told him he's doing what you told him to do, and he gets hurt, well, sure. Well, son, you, you did what I told you to do. You was in the place where I told you to do. You hurt yourself. That's all right. I, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to mollify you with ointment. I'm going to wrap that bruised knee or that smashed finger, whatever it may be, because you obey me. I'm going to comfort you in that. But Yahweh's not going to comfort us if we continue to walk in sin. No, he's not. But yet here we see this example of Job. How he walked in the Torah. The scripture says that he was perfect. He was upright. And yet these trials, these temptations, these things came upon him like a, a, a whirlwind. But yet he stood. And he stood on the promises of Almighty Yahweh. And yet Yahweh still continually blessed him. Yahweh was with him. Yahweh did not forsake him in all that he did. Hallelujah. So it says, so when Satan, he went forth from the presence of Yahweh, it says, and smote Yob with sores and boils from the top of his head, it says, to the sole of his feet unto the crown of his head. And he took him a posture and scraped himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. I, I bet at this time Yob was wondering, what in the world did I do now? Can you imagine that being covered with boils to the point? I mean, I've had a few boils. They're sore, palsy, they itch, they're irritated. It seems like you get them in the most tenderest of spots. But here he had them all over his body. And the only way to somewhat comfort himself, to purge his body, he had to scrape that. Can you imagine that? That would be a, a grotesque thing, wouldn't it, to, to witness that? Would, would not. I mean, I would almost, you almost lose Imuna and that alone. That kind of affliction upon your body. But Job, he did not. And he got to the point that even his wife, it said his wife said unto him, do you still retain your integrity? What was the integrity of Job? What was that thing that gave him strength? He stood upon the Daba of Yahweh, the word of Yah. So even his wife said unto him, do you still retain your integrity? This foolish woman said to curse Yahweh and die. You, you have endured much. You have suffered much. You still 
do you still hold your integrity that Yahweh will deliver you, that he will keep you, that he is your almighty one, that he will be there in your time of need? Look at you, Job. You're a mess. Curse him and die. But you know that's what Satan wants us to do? He wants us to curse Yah. If he could get us to curse Yah, then his, his, his job is done. He wants us to curse Yah. He wants us to say, your word, Yahweh, is none of it. Your name, Yahweh, doesn't mean anything. But Job did not give up. He didn't give in to the trials of the enemy. Yet he still retained what the scripture says, his integrity, or the integrity of Yahweh, his word. That's what we must do, conditions of Yahweh. We must sustain, retain Yahweh's, the Bible, his word, and our love. We must keep his Mishra, his Torah, continually in our heart and upon our mind. That's the integrity of Yahweh. How much integrity do we have today? Do we study? Do we seek out? Do we ask of Yahweh what you want me to do, Yahweh, today? What is your desire? What is your will? Or do we go about our own way? Do we go about our own path? When we're pressed, do we get pressed out to whereby there's no more juices or the life of Messiah in our love and in our hearts? There should be a continual flow of the wine and of the juices that when we are tried conditions of Yahweh, that yet still there's a harvest. Did we not talk about the harvest on this past week? The harvest of Yahweh. That when he tried us, yes, he can still harvest the wine, the sweetness of his Torah, in the house of Yisrael, that we will be a fruit that is lush, a fruit without spot and blemish, that when we are pressed and when we are tried, that we will come forth pure, that when Yahweh tastes of the blood of the juice, that it will be a sweet taste unto his mouth. Hallelujah. Don't no one want to taste anything bitter? You don't want to go to the juice section, section of any grocery store and get apple juice or orange juice and you get it and it's bitter? That's not going to fit your palate. That's not what you want. I would take it back. Get my money back. I wouldn't want that. So do we think if Yahweh, if he squeezes, he press us, that he's going to want to partake of the bitterness of what he gets out of the press? No, he's not going to want that. He's going to destroy that. He's going to get rid of that. He's going to put that on the, on the back burner. That's not what Yahweh is looking for. But when we are pressed, as Zarkane Shimmy explained to us, that what comes out of us will be pleasing unto Almighty Yahweh. And everyone's being tried, as he expressed unto us. The world's being tried. Yet when they're pressed, they're going to bring forth more wickedness. But yet that same trial upon the house of Israel, when we're pressed, just as I read about Yo, that those things will come out of us will be more amuna, more faith, more joy. More praises unto Abba Yahweh. That we present a praise unto Yahweh as never before. See, when we're oppressed and we are tried, we should become stronger. Hallelujah. As Shimri said, we should want Satan, we should dare him, bring it on. But we don't say that. We want to say, that's, I can't handle that. That's too much for me to handle. No. Yahweh has placed in us something more powerful than that. That when it's tried, no matter how much it's tried, that it will not wear out conditions of Yahweh. Yahweh's word will never wear out. So let us hide it in our lives that we not sin against Yahweh, that we can bring the offerings before Yahweh that is pleasing and that acceptable, and that we can go on, and that we can see what the end is going to be. Hallelujah. Well, what is the end, Zakan Yaramia? Yahweh desires the end of his people to be one that is, is, is beautiful. That we can look on all of our labors and all that we've gone through, we can look back and say it was worth it all. It was worth that. Yeah, I, I, I about got the life beat out of me, but it was worth that. I was tried on every side, but you'll be able to look back from the Shemayans, look back and say it was worth that. Hallelujah. As the scripture says, there is nothing that we or any trial or any kind of pain, temptation that we go, that we go through in this physical body that can be compared to the purity and the honor that we shall receive in the Shemayim. I look forward to that. 
Hallelujah. I look forward to the trial. Oh, you say that now? It's okay, yeah, Rabbi. Yeah, I do. I say it by your moon. Now, not by my own strength, but by the strength of Yah. Because I know that he will take care of us. I know that he will keep us. Do not he provide what is needed unto the sparrows, unto the birds? You look at them, they always have something to eat. It don't seem like they ever, they, they never um, suffer hunger. Aren't we more than a sephora or a sparrow or a bird? Are we more than just the cattle of the field unto Abba Yahweh? Well, don't you know he will take care of us? He will keep us. He will provide for the house of Israel. And as Shimri said, just look at yourself now. Look how far he brought you today. Hallelujah. Is not his Torah real? Does not his word stand? Hallelujah. Are we not still yet here today? We have life in our body. Hallelujah. We have the Muna in our mind. Yahweh's Torah in our mind that we may stand. Conditions of Yahweh. Hallelujah. So let us stand. When the trials come, just stand. Stand upon the Dabar of Yahweh. My mind goes back to a song that, that um, Evangelist Horn was singing. He said, when I cannot say a word, I would just wave my hand. Hallelujah. I just lift up my hand before Almighty Yahweh. When I don't have any more strength, I'll just lift my hand. I'll just stand on your promises, y'all. I don't have much to say. But you have said it all, Abba Yahweh. So I would just go upon your precious promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would just wave my hand. So let us stand. Let us stand. Let us not give up. Hallelujah. Yahweh has not given, us, given up on us yet. Hallelujah. He's still working on me. Hallelujah. So let us not become weak and weary and give up upon Abba Yahweh. Hallelujah. For his word it should take preeminence in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Way. It also says here in verse 10, but he said unto her, and we should say this unto Satan, he said, you speaketh as one of a, of a foolish, or that which a foolish woman speaketh. What? Shall we receive tub of the hand of Abba Yahweh? We receive all those good things, don't we? And I use that word good. When things are going good and going your way, you got plenty of money in your pocket. You got a nice car sitting outside. All the things that physically and visually seem that are good. We not receive those things of Abba Yahweh, Job is saying. And, and in all this did not Job, I'm sorry, receive tub of the hand of Yahweh. And shall we not receive the evil? It all comes from Yahweh. Even the bad things we think are bad, the trials and the, and the situations, temptations, all that comes from Yahweh. And all this did not Yob sin with his lips. Even in all these trials and these tribulations, even though his body was covered with boils, even though Satan was pressing and Yahweh was allowing the enemy to try him and to press upon him, still yet it says that he did not sin with his lips. He did not let any perverse thing just come out. He did not deny Yahweh. He did not question Almighty Yahweh. Can we say that? Can we say that we have not questioned Yahweh, let any kind of vile thing come out of our mouths before Abba Yahweh? Have we cursed Yahweh? Have we denied Almighty Yah? Hallelujah. Job didn't. And we have not even tasted a scintilla of what Job went through. We all know about this, the, the situation, if I may say the story, and what he went through. How his friends, they come to comfort him. They give him consolation. But even in all that, he did not forsake Almighty Yahweh. So let us not forsake Yahweh. Let us not walk away from what all he has done for us and give it all up because this is who we are. But let us press on to see what the end is going to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, conditions of Yah. Hallelujah. We do barack you all, those that are listening by via of live stream. We do ask that you all will keep Rayak Dawid, Yisrael, in your prayers as he accomplished the work that he has gone forth to accomplish. 
And we know that it will be accomplished because Yahweh said that when he sent his word forth and when it goes forth, that it will not come back unto him void. And even that the message that Shemri preached unto us today, that we'll hide it in our lives, that we will grow from that. And that, that word that was sent forth today will not return unto Abba Yahweh void. Let us turn. Hallelujah. We do barak you, Abba Yahweh, for all things, for your Torah, your Mitzvah. Yahweh, you are the light of our life, Abba Yahweh. And it's by your Torah, and it's by your Mitzvah, Yahweh, that we find life. And that we have life today, Abba Yahweh. It's not in what we consume in our flesh, Abba Yahweh. It's not by physical possessions. It's not by houses. It's not by land. For all those things will perish. It's not by wealth, Yah. But it's only by your word, Abba Yahweh. And you're giving your word to us today in abundance, Abba Yahweh. And we do told our you, Yah. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, you will touch all those that have listened by via of live stream. And the ears of those here at Teshua Community, Abba Yahweh. And you will take us to our appointed places, our home safely, Abba Yahweh. Zarkane Shemri, take him and his wife, Yahweh, home safely. Sister Blunt, take them home safely, Abba Yahweh. All the conditions. And that, Abba Yahweh, we will continue to grow. Even though we're in a press and times seem like they're hard, Abba Yahweh, shall, it, it, shall we as the house of Israel, Yah, we will yet still Produce more and more fruit, Abba Yahweh. More and more wine. More and more, Yahweh, of that which will please you. For all things we do, Barak you, and we give you Todah. In the mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do declare. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh, Barak you, all condition. Hallelujah.